You are listening to the Cattle Call Podcast. This is the place where computer-aided design and drafting meets humor and practicality, with a touch of business acumen thrown in for fun. Jim and Rocco, the owners of Zentech Consultants, the premier U.S. technology consulting firm for architecture, engineering, construction, and manufacturing, discuss the fascinating world of CAD with some humor and some honesty. The Cattle Call Podcast. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the... Oh, my cow didn't play. You know, I'm doing this, and how how is that after all this time, the cow for one time now just decides it's not going to play for me, Rocco? It's completely unfair. Uh, you got to do it over. I know I'm going to have to do it over. It's, you know, you messed my whole day up, Rocco. I'm blaming you for this. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but... You didn't, you didn't right. milk the cow this morning. There we go. I forgot to milk the cow. Now the cow's milk. Now the cow's working. So there we go. Do it again. Welcome to the Cattle Call Podcast. There you go. Sounds much better with the cow. Otherwise, it just sounds like some silly old guy yelling into the microphone, which I am. But that's a whole other story. So welcome, everybody, with uh, Jim and Rocco from Zentech Consultants. I am Jim, your, oh, you know, charming and intelligent and fun host. And with me, as always, is my partner. The one without the adjectives, it's Rocco. It's Rocco. See, I got all the adjectives. Rocco got all the money. I don't think I made out well in that partnership deal. I have to revisit that with my attorney soon. So, but that's all right. We can ignore that for today because we have a special treat for all you guys today. We have both uh, Tim Yaris and Ramesh Shridharan are from Autodesk, uh, have both been silly enough to join us on the podcast again. So guys, welcome. We really appreciate you guys taking the, taking the time to be here with us today. Absolutely. Guys. Great to be here. Good, good. We, you know, we always love having you guys on. So just, just to remind uh, our listeners, right, for whom who might not remember, uh, Tim is the Civil 3D Product Manager for Autodesk, and uh, Ramesh is, is the Product Manager for the Autodesk InfraWorks team. Um, and they're both here today to talk to us about the upcoming 2023, it's already here, uh, release of, of both products, right, and what awesome new tools and processes we have to look forward to this year. Um, and before we get into that, though, I want to, you know, learn a little bit more about our guests, right, for folks who don't remember them from their previous visits. So, let's, Tim, let's start with you. Can you give us kind of a, a brief rundown of, of what you do as the Civil 3D Product Manager for this? You bet. Sure. So, spend a lot of my time really just getting to know our customers. Um, and what that really means to me is really working with them to understand what's really important to them as far as their day-to-day work and what's important to them with our products specifically, obviously. Um, And that might mean a lot of kind of finding out from our customers what's missing from the products that would make their lives easier. Um, But also it might mean, or it does mean rather, a lot of what might be wrong with the product that's costing them time or causing them frustration day-to-day. Like, so finding out like, what sort of issues might be propping up that um, that we really need to address in a quick manner. And so based on that type of stuff, I spend a lot of time also with Ramesh balancing what our customers' needs are across the industries that they work in. So, I mean, it could be roadway design versus rail versus utilities, just kind of making sure that we balance out like the the right mix of what all those different industries need in our products but then also trying to balance all those requirements against what Autodesk's goals might be for the future. So, I mean, we, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a delicate balancing act and we (laughs) rarely make everybody happy, but we try our best. You know, you do what you can, right? But that's good. So it sounds like basically you're the, you're the guy who goes in and you, you, you try to make things better and try to smooth it over when it doesn't quite work. So not, not an enviable position, but good. I'm glad you're there to do it. So Ramesh, what, what about you, right? You, you run the InfraWorks team. Um, you know, what, what do your daily responsibilities kind of entail over there? Sure. Um, it starts with a round of golf. And that, <laughs> <laughs> round of golf, some mimosas. I have your yeah. catered caviar breakfast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, it's, a, it's, a, it's similar to what Tim mentioned. I think on, on the InfraWorks product side, I know we talk about InfraWorks and Civil 3D, but when, like my Tim mentioned, we always put our heads together. We have other industry PMs also working with our customers. So we try to pull all those information to make sure we are doing the right thing at the right time in the right way. In a nutshell, that's what we're trying to do. Like a prioritizing request, and sometimes a couple of things I will add up to what Tim mentioned is 
there's always some end of the world situation will come something doesn't work <laughs> something crashing so that is handling that and sync with our uh, support and marketing team and uh, the road maps and things like that those are the few additional things uh, we both do team and i do uh, on a daily basis so just a few things a little little expert juggling and you're you're just fine so yep. <laughs> all right excellent. Way, I, I, you, you mentioned my name perfectly fine this is the first time anyone mentioned that first time in the right, right manner oh that's absolutely uh, fantastic i'm gonna make his head big see i'm great i only spent like three hours trying to get that right this morning <laughs> <So>. <laughs> hey so i did something right today i think that means i get to go home now so all right so let's get into this so i i actually wanted to talk first about uh infraworks today because i have actually heard some rumors uh, that there has been a lot of updates made to the upcoming release of infraworks in in, in terms of uh, conceptual and preliminary design, which, you know, let, let's be honest, right? To, to my mind, um, it, it's been a seriously underserved area of the site design world. Um, and look, you know, th that preliminary design, it's something we all do. It's where we start every single project. Uh, but for a really long time now, I think the, the focus of the civil CAD world, not, not just at Autodesk, but everywhere, has really been on, on the full-scale design side. Um, and I'm really hoping that Autodesk has done some some good stuff here to help those initial concepts get done quickly and accurately so that, you know, we, we can all get client owner approvals and get the jobs moving a lot more quickly. So with that in mind, Ramesh, uh, it, it seems like you guys have really put a big focus on the preliminary design process with the new InfraWorks. Um, you know, what what's driving that as a business decision and how have beta testers responded? Definitely. So you're absolutely right, Jim. Um, the preliminary design doesn't get the, um, the limelight as it should. Um, it was funny when, when I was talking with one of the customers, this came up in the discussion. It's like, why are we having a, um, you know, the directions apps, right? like a Google Maps or something like that. So from we want to go from point A to point B, before we start the drive, you check it out is the right direction to go, is everything is fine, and all those things you check before you drive. We do all those things, but when it comes to a engineering design aspect of it, having a preliminary design aspect, a conceptual design to make sure, is that what we are going to build? Does it satisfy all the conditions? All those things checking is really important. Many yeah. customers do, actually. Many customers understand that, yeah. Um, but having that notion, yeah, you can always drive without checking the maps, but then you have to stop here and there, make correction, come back, take a U-turn, all those things, and <laughs> that's exactly what Info is trying to avoid. Um, so many customers are understanding that and some are a little bit ca catching up on that part of it. So that's the, that, that's what driving the business decision. So we know that the tool does what it does in a fantastic way. And obviously there are more room to improve. That's what we are actually uh, working on. And there are some of those items that's coming up in the uh, upcoming release. Uh, when we talk to the beta testers, when we do the, see the adoption rate of the product and you can actually see that people are slowly and slowly and getting onto it. Um, so having this as a key, we strongly believe it's not just it's not just what is important for Autodesk, right? It's important for the industry as well. More we do the testing and the checking and the stakeholder engagement before you start the project makes the project more successful. Because you know, what are the roads they're building using civil 3D? I'm going to drive on it. I I, I hope it better be good. <laughs> there you go. No, I agree <laughs> with that 100. I mean, it's it's the right approach. It's 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 is vital. Um, and I, I, I like your analogy of, of tying with Google Maps, right? Knowing where you're going before you start out is, is really important. So with that in mind, Ramesh, what, what, what can our listeners expect in terms of, of the concept planning uh, in, in the InfraWorks 2023? What, what, what are you guys bringing us? Sure. We are continuing our trend. So you know, for those customers who are following the InfraWorks releases um, every year, um, they can actually see that we actually put more capability on the regular conceptual design. Like I think you mentioned site as one of the part in the beginning. You're absolutely right. There are a few of the parking layout tools, um, enhancements to that, adding those capabilities. Uh, we did that in the past release, but this release made it much better. Uh, now user can really use it, let me put it that way. Um, and the other aspect InfraWorks is really uh, marching on is the civil structures, the bridge design workflow many customers across the world actually using using that so we, we have some improvements on that and also it's funny um, um i was thinking the other day so when you talk about the product release like people always go with the um, um, feature part what the features coming up but actual users when they use it some 
user experience aspect of it. Now, there's some hiccups they do, even just finding the commands or finding what things are, that adds up time too. Um, so, and it's true for InfraWorks as well. So one simple feature, but really effective is what we call the command search. Now you can just type a command. It actually remembers what commands you typed before. You find it easily. Now you don't have to juggle through the toolbars and you can get it done very fast. So those are some of the few things come up. Um, yeah, in the upcoming 2023. Nice, nice. Command search, always a good tool when you can just get to what you need quickly. So let, yeah. let's get Tim back into the conversation here. So, you know, you know, look guys, you know, as, as regular, our regular listeners know, um, I, I have personally kind of lived and died <laughs> in the civil 3D space since, you know, it first came out and, and LDD and soft desk long before that. And it's always, you know, it's my personal, you know, kind of, you know, squee, you know, schoolgirl moment when, when, when cool new things hit that package. I, it, it always, it's always my start point each year with the new release, right? I get very excited. Uh, so, so Tim, what are the key features that you guys are rolling out with uh, Civil 3D 2023 that are going to, you know, get our listeners and, and me all, all kind of excited? So if you remember, so we, uh, I think we mentioned one of the last times we were, t we were on this call was the fact that like over the last couple of years, we did a bunch of research just on civil 3D customer satisfaction because we wanted to know what was what was preventing a lot of our customers like you from saying squee quite as loudly as we would <laughs> like to. So, so, I mean, we did a whole bunch of work on like both performance and workflow enhancements to just make things easier for people in the 2022.1 release that just came out in November. And so what we started with with 2023 was just kind of making a bunch of fine tuning kind of exercises to a lot of the improvements that we did in that 2021.1 update. And so um, where you'll see some of that fine tuning is in, you'll remember that we, we did a whole new um, overhaul of the quarter targeting workflow. And so what we did as far as 2023 is concerned with that is um, we, made a bunch of updates to make it so that like the longstanding requests for like, if I have uh, a layer that I'm targeting, that I have a bunch of line work on, if I, now in 2023, if you add some new line work to that layer, then those objects will automatically get picked up as targets in your quarter without having to go back in and kind of pick them manually, that yeah, sort of thing. That's real nice. Yeah, for sure. It'll save people a bunch of time and frustration. Um, just being able to do things like target multiple surfaces with this new workflow and then make it so that um, basically we added a whole bunch of new functionality to just enhance the filtering capability that we introduced with the quarter targeting workflow in 2022.1. So just generally just easier to use, just make take some of the pain out of the quarter targeting workflow that was there in previous releases. Um, you also see a bunch more work that we've done on the we've over the last couple of years, we've done a whole bunch of work around uh, pressure network layout and editing. Um, you'll see some new improvements there as far as just vertical editing is concerned. So uh, some of the feedback that we got were there are too many PVIs that were um, visible when you first selected a yeah, pressure network yeah. and profile. Yeah. So we did, we added some features in there so that it basically like you're not, you're not getting a PVI for every point on your surface that uh, <laughs> that basically the pressure network is crossing, which was painful. Um, so basically what you're going to see now is that like the, the PVIs are only going to show up at cut lengths and fittings and appurtenances. So where they should be. Ah, perfect. Um, yeah. And then you'll see a bunch of other things around like same thing with pressure networks, just um, easier to do vertical overrides on your profiles labeling custom properties in your pipe networks, all that kind of good stuff that you just expect to be able to do when you're designing utility networks. Um, gosh, what else is there? There's a bunch of stuff that we've done as far as, I mean, last several years, we've done a lot of work on our railway related tools. And so uh, this release, we added support for switch and turnout catalogs for the United States, which is a big thing. Um, and then um, one thing that we, dipped back into on the 2023 side that we haven't touched in quite a while is subassembly composer. Um, really an update for that. It has been quite a while. It has. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's been kind of neglected for a bit. And so, I mean, one of the key things that we saw up on both customer feedback that we've talked to one-on-one -on -one, and then also up on the civil 30 ideas forum was, I mean, 
just silly thing that we missed a long time ago was the whole idea of an auxiliary curve element. And so if there was a lot, there was an aux line and an aux point, but we didn't have a curve. And so, I mean, got a lot of votes up there on the Civil 3D Ideas Forum. And so we finally had the opportunity to kind of revisit some of some of the composer, add that object in, as well as just a couple more little fine tuning things on some of some of the composer, like being able to see a little indicator in the file name when it's you have unsaved changes and that sort of thing. And so sub assembly composer is finally getting some love and we're still we're actually still working on it right now. So you can expect some more uh updates to sub assembly composer in the not too terribly distant future. So so that's I think the big stuff in twenty three as far as Civil Three is concerned. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, particularly like what you're doing here with the, the pressure pipe. Like I said, you know, the direction you guys went with the pressure pipe in those last couple of updates is is the right way. I love it. But yeah, it, it did have like with the extra PVIs. It was a little awkward sometimes when you were editing it, but that's great. That's good to hear. Yeah. So uh, so in, in this, you know, I guess, you know, in, in the previous release, Tim, in 2022, um, you guys did a lot to improve kind of the overall civil 3D performance, making things move smoother and faster. Uh, yeah. with less space. I mean, did, did you guys do anything to kind of help speed things up even more in 2023? Yeah, actually we did. Um, again, I think I mentioned one of the last times we talked that this was when we did a whole bunch of the customer satisfaction research on civil 3D performance was the number one area by far that people wanted us to give some focus to. So we continued that for 23. And basically, I mean, some of the things you'll see on that front are, again, just quarter performance. I mean, the quarter is a very complicated object and it takes a lot of processing time to generate a quarter. Mm -hmm. One of the big areas that we looked at as far as that's concerned is just how shapes are calculated as part of that whole quarter modeling process. So you'll see quarter regeneration a great deal more efficient than it has been in the past. Um, You'll also see things around section view and sample line performance. So um, those were also areas that like if you made a change in one area of civil 3D, like in particular one section view, in a lot of cases it would regenerate all your section views or all your sample lines when you really only needed the one. And so we've we've really made it now so that like really a lot of things in the section views um, will only regenerate in the one that you're actually actively working in, which is going to make a big difference. Um, and then that also kind of continues on to just the section viewports as well. So, I mean, if you think about like, if you're focusing on editing like a single, like single viewport of a section view of like showing one section view in paper space, right. um, there's that once that one collection of geometry and labels and stuff like that that's in that one section view and a lot of cases in previous versions of civil 3d if you made an edit to that to something in that uh, viewport it would redraw the viewport the contents of the viewport but it would also redraw everything that was outside the viewport whether it needed to or not and so we did some work to eliminate that so you're not going to be seeing those objects that don't need to be redrawn. You're not going to see those being processed and redrawn in the background when they really don't need to be. Um, so that's going to make a big difference. Um, nice. And then, yeah. And then the last thing, big area that was kind of a, a real annoyance to a lot of customers was the fact that like, um, again, something you don't think about necessarily all the time, but the event viewer, um, let's say you rebuilt a quarter. In a lot of cases, if there was something wrong in one station of the quarter, it would base, or something that would affect one station, it would like throw messages out there for that same error on every station that it touched. And it was just, it was unusable. I mean, it was just, I, I'm well aware of that when it's a pet peeve of mine. It's something that always made me nuts. So I'm glad to hear you guys are, are fixing that. Well, good. Well, hopefully they'll make you go squee because, I mean, <laughs> it's basically consolidating it so that it's you're really just only going to see one of those messages. And generally speaking, like a lot of cases when you rebuild a quarter, like time and time again, like it would take the event viewer like a long time to populate with all the appropriate messages. And then the next time that you regenerated that quarter, it would take even longer. And the next time it would take even longer than that. Um, so basically we did a bunch of work in the background so that each time you like the, it will get shorter and shorter to populate the event viewer with the appropriate messages each time you rebuild a quarter. So just, again, just 
trying to take some pain away from people and just reduce the amount of time that they're waiting for silly things to happen, like the event viewer being populated with uh, noisy messages. So yeah. that's, I think that's the big stuff. Yeah, no, those are all good things. Like I said, you know, it's, it's, it's important to focus on fixing those day-to-day operational issues. Just, you know, it's, it seems like, you know, and, and listen, I know that we got a lot of listeners who maybe don't live in the civil 3D world or, or do the CAD world every day, but, you know, a 30-second a wait when you're running this thing 15, 20 times an hour, it's like, oh, come on, you're just chewing up my time. So every little oh, bit yeah. like that is a huge help. So I'm, I'm really excited to hear that. So, all right. We're hoping that we're hoping that a lot of times it's like right now, like I think that sometimes like performance is kind of a um, it, it takes time for people to notice it because it's like for a task that like if they kick off a quarter rebuild and they have to like in 2020 civil three 2020, for example, if they kicked off a quarter rebuild and they're used to just like kind of leaving their desk, going to go get a cup of coffee because it's going to take a while. <laughs> um we're hoping that people kind of stay in their seats in 23 and like not get their coffee or wait to get their coffee because I mean, they won't, they'll see if they're sitting at their desk that the, the rebuild is going to take a lot less time than it had in previous versions. So there you go. There you go. Important safety tick, you know, t- take a few extra seconds with the new release and see how much better it is. So you don't you always it. have to, to walk away. That's cool. So, you know, look, you know, like I said earlier, right. Take me a uh, tech geek like me. I, I always love it when these new releases come out. It's like, it's like Christmas morning for those of us in the cat world, right? We get a whole new slew of toys and features to play with, and it just brings it brings joy to our souls. Uh, you know, for, for a lot of folks, though, uh, particularly management people, um, the idea of new is it, it can actually be frightening, right? They, they want to hold off on changes and updates for as long as possible because it means, you know, learning new things and, and processes, and that means potentially slowing down production while your users are going through that learning curve for the new tech. Um, so, you know, Rocco, do, do you see that as getting better? Um, you know, I, I think, you know, as, as more younger people are, are moving up into senior management, right, people who kind of grew up with technology hand in hand with it, uh, are you finding that they're more comfortable with annual upgrades and you're getting less pushback? Yeah, I, I, you know, I think that that Autodesk has certainly helped that process along, right? Um, it, it's, you know, people are, are are looking at it. Well, I'm spending this money from year to year, so I need to really start looking into what's, you know, what 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 am I paying for, <clears throat> and uh, and let's start adopting some of these features and. So I, I think it's a combination of, of Autodesk pushing it and and you know younger generation um, getting getting in their their hands in in the mix here and then the need to uh, w- with how busy the industry is just the need to be more productive. So mm-hmm. how do you become more productive by utilizing you know powerful tools uh, like like uh, what's what's incorporated here in, in the newer features of, of of Civil 3D and InfraWorks and the other Autodesk products. Yeah, fair answer, fair answer. All right, so I'm, I'm going to kind of wrap up the first half of today's show today by asking both of our guests, right, the same question that I just asked Rocco, but I want to get their views from the Autodesk viewpoint. So, uh, you know, R- Ramesh, how do, you, do you still see people working on old releases for extended periods? And, and how do you convince them that, you know, the, the cool new updates for InfraWorks are a benefit to them and not a concern. Definitely, I mean, th- there are a few folks still using the older version, uh, and and there are a couple of reasons. The one thing you mentioned, obviously, the the new technology part of it, but of course, they already onboarded to InfraWorks. The new features is what coming up, and our ex- our XT team, our teams are doing a good job on making that transition a little bit smoother. But most of the time, the reason comes is I'm, I'm working on a bigger project. I'm using, um, let's just say, hypothetically, 2020 version, for example. And yes, I can switch it, but will it cause any trouble? Uh, it's, it's a valid concern. It's a big project. So those are the things they're actually looking into it. Um, and they, they kind of stick to the older version till that project is over and things like that. So those are some of the things our customers are facing, even though you they can transition it. but you know, bigger project is a big project. Uh, the other way we kind of uh, make sure they can, and for any other reason, they're stuck to the older version. Uh, we are making sure they can come to the new version, look like this side of the glory is, um, at least for last two, I think we mentioned this in last calls as well, 
we made it very easy for a civil 3D drawing or the Revit model or something to come into InfraWorks as a design verification. I know we talked about it as a stakeholder, um, um, the preliminary design before, but during the design process, you can bring in the data into InfraWorks, visualize things in true 3D in context with a variety of stuff. So that helps some kind of getting into the newer version and use new stuff, um, makes it makes their life much easier, makes our life much easier to maintain the latest versions as well. <laughs> there you go. And that's always important. So, all right. So, so Tim, right. Same, same thing kind of, but on the civil 3d side, right. How do you focus your staff on, on helping, you know, people overcome that kind of, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know, mentality that, that can leave companies behind the CAD curve. Yeah, you bet. Um, so a couple of things. So I guess first, uh, first and foremost, I mean, we totally understand that. I mean, customer projects, often spin years so it's not like they're just kind of knocking projects these big roadway projects off in a month's time and they can quickly put down the pencil and devote the time to upgrading to a new version of civil 3d every month or, or every year for that matter <laughs> so i mean there's i mean we get it that a lot of those projects can't just change versions in midstream. I mean, a lot of cases, there are requirements that the project has to stay on a given version of Civil 3D, which is why you still see a lot of customers still using 2020, 2018, those sorts of things. Yeah. So um, so it's it's tough, And but we understand where some of those constraints come from. Um, so how we, how we try to make it so that it's more desirable for people to move up to the latest version is, I mean, in, for one thing, I mean, you, you mentioned the whole, it, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, sometimes things are broke. Yeah, there <laughs> you sometimes. go. That's fair. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I mean, if there are like a, some like defects in the product that are broke, then, I mean, we fix those things and as often as we possibly can and as efficiently as we can. And so um, just having those things fixed in new versions definitely kind of causes people to say squee like if it's some little bug that's been bothering them for a while i mean just fixing those types of things that aren't really necessarily super exciting like shiny new features it's it's still a big deal if something's just actually working <laughs> it's yeah. a big deal it is that i mean that that i think has a much bigger impact on the day-to-day -day than even the cool new feature right it's great to get a brand new you know completely out of the box tool to play with but when you just fix things that have been bugging people Man, it makes it so much easier every day. So that's that's yeah. awesome. We've gotten feedback about that, like when like kind of when we're kind of like going through like the like doing like a hey, here's what's new in Civil 3D like presentation with people, and we we show them all the exciting new videos of like here's all the cool new stuff, and then we kind of breeze through the readme of like oh yeah, and we've fixed a bunch of defects, and people will kind of focus on the one line item in the readme that will say like fixed an issue where this thing happened and it caused you a lot of grief. People focus on those and yeah. they, they love that stuff. So, yeah. I mean, little stuff that makes a big difference. Um, but then, I mean, we, we try to make it so that, I mean, again, just making it desirable for people to move up to the latest version. I mean, so it's being able to come on things like this and being able to promote new functionality is just incredibly valuable to us. Just telling people about what's new and just how we've made the product faster, how we've made the user more efficient um, makes a big difference. And then also, I mean, to to Ramesh's point earlier about making it easier to move between versions, I mean, making that as, making that as easy as possible is a big deal. And so, I mean, one of the things that people always ask us about is the whole, like every time I got a couple emails even this morning about it, like just so, new version of civil 3d is the dwg format or the civil 3d object <laughs> format has that changed yeah so again this i'm so happy to be able to say that i mean with 2023 there's no change to the dwg or civil 3d object format so i mean it's it's 2023 is backward compatible all the way back to 2018 so that's perfect just, I, I, you yeah. know it, it's one of those concerns and i get it and I, i'm a big fan of forward progress but every time we have to do that it is troublesome because you got so many folks you got to share those files with. So, yeah, I, I know there's going to come a day when it is vital to upgrade those for new capacity and new capabilities, but it, it is always nice when you don't have, it's one less thing to have to worry about. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, we're, we're trying to push that day that it finally comes off as long as we possibly can. 
There you go. Makes Bilks happy. All right, folks. So we're going to take a quick break here to listen to today's sponsor. But stick around because we're going to be talking with Tim and Ramesh a lot more when we get back on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, Rocco. So we are sponsoring ourselves yet again today. What is it we want to talk about? We're going to talk about me today, Jim. No, no one wants to talk about you. Not even you. <laughs> oh, fine. Let's talk about Zentech Tech Blocks. Awesome. I like Zentech Tech Blocks. Zentech Tech Blocks are prepaid support hours that let you call on Zentech's experienced technical staff to address all your support questions, problems, help you with workflows and standards, really anything you need on the technology side. We're here to provide the support you need so that your most talented people aren't being dragged into helping everybody else in your company instead of working on the billable jobs that you need them focused on. All right, so Zentech Tech Blocks are available in uh, multiple sizes. We sell them in 5-hour, 10-hour, 20-hour, and 40-hour prepaid support blocks. And if you're interested and you need that sort of help, Rocco, how do they reach out to us? Yeah, hit up our website, zentechconsultants.net. Give us a ring, 866-824-4459, or even drop us an email, sales at zentechconsultants.net. All right, Zentech Tech Tech Blocks, the vital support that your people need exactly at the moment that they need it. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Cattle Call Podcast, where my cow sound is now working. So uh, we're talking with Tim and Ramesh, the, the civil site masterminds uh, you know, over at Autodesk, uh, about the upcoming 2023 release of the civil product lines. Um, and in this half, I want to get a little bit more info on kind of the, the secondary and peripheral apps that are kind of integrating into the new release, um, and, and even talk a little bit. Uh, about what might be coming our way later in the year. Um, you know, if, if I can get these gentlemen to kind of flex their, their confidentiality and NDA rules a little bit. Um, so, Tim, in, in previous episodes, right, we've talked a lot about uh, the Project Explorer tool for Civil 3D. And I'm a huge fan of that. I mean, are, are there any changes or improvements in 2023 coming for the Project Explorer tool? Yeah, you bet. Yeah, love Project Explorer. Um, so a couple things that we've done there. So... Compare to, so if you remember, there's a tool in there where you can basically say, okay, I've got a surface showing up on my screen or a, or a feature line, and I want to be able to kind of see where, um, how those different objects interact with each other. Mm -hmm. So we updated the compare to tool. So basically now you can compare, I think it's point groups, blocks, and parcels to feature lines. Um, so a lot of nice. good stuff going, yeah. So you can kind of get a better idea of the context of each of the objects um, just in the in, within the context of the rest of the drawing. So good stuff there. Um, other big area that we've continued to focus on is, I mean, AutoCAD tables. So Project Explorer does a great job of just generating dynamic AutoCAD tables and also custom reports. Mm -hmm. um, and so we've continued to kind of bulk that functionality up because that was the tables autocad tables for civil 3d was is still is actually the number one uh voted for idea up on the civil 3d ideas forum and so we wanted to make sure that we could knock as much of that uh functionality that was requested off up on there so so what we've done for 2023 is we've again just made a bunch of enhancements to the table functionality so that you can now do custom table rows for things like summaries and notes and totals and that kind of thing. Uh, so it's not just the automatically generated uh, content that comes from the Civil 3D objects into the tables and reports. You can be a bit more custom about it. Um, again, I think I mentioned total rows. You can have like some of the contents of the column, which is really cool. And then also just little things like being able to customize the row height of the different rows in the table. I mean, again, just not not necessarily super exciting, but I mean, just little tweaks to be able to make your tables as just fit the needs for a given application. So, um, and again, there's, we're still, I can't flex too hard just right now on the NDA front, but I mean, Project Explorer is still a lot of really good stuff coming on that front in the near future. So stay tuned. Excellent. 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 Um, so, yeah, so, you know, Tim, we, we, we also talked um, both, you know, when you were on the show and, and here on our own, Rocco and I, uh, a lot about the grading optimization tools, which are just amazing. Um, do you guys have, have new stuff happening for that in this new release? Yeah, absolutely. Um, again, this is all about, 
again, we had the 2022.1 updates out not too terribly long before uh, 2023. And so what we were able to do as far as new stuff for 23 is concerned on the grading optimization front is, again, just a little bit more in the way of just kind of just sharpening the pencil a bit, just fine tuning what's there so that it's just a all around better product. Um, so a couple things you're going to see there are, let's see, there's just generally performance. I mean, just making just the grading optimization process take a great deal less time than it had in the past, which is a good thing. Just the product's more performant. And then just little things like, um, so one bit of feedback that we got previous versions of grading optimization was that the feature lines that would be returned um, after the optimization process, feature lines that were returned back into Civil 3D, um, in a lot of cases, they would overlap with each other when they were brought back into the drawing. And so, you know how the drama that happens when <laughs> feature lines interact yeah. on the same slide. So, yeah, so we basically fixed it so that um, feature lines that come back into Civil 3D from grading op optimization, they don't overlap anymore. So, I mean, that's just a big deal there. Just, again, just making it so that it just less things to clean up and less less drama when things come back into the product. Um, what else was there I wanted to touch on? Oh, so you love grading optimization? We want everybody to love grading optimization. We want everybody to be more aware of grading optimization and make it easier for people to get up to speed with it. And so big focus on grading optimization for 23 has been just general customer awareness and adoption and just making it easier for people to learn about it and get up and running. And so to that end, we did a lot of work on, there's a new help center panel on grading optimization that will give you in context, just hints about kind of how you can learn more about it, how you can learn just the, the overall process of using the tool within Civil 3D. Um, we've updated a whole bunch of the notifications that happen as far as just the what's happening with the grading optimization process, like what might be kind of what you might want to draw your attention to is to kind of like what might need to be tweaked a little bit to get a better result, uh, better graphing of like how the like convergence and how the uh, validation is happening within grading optimization. So just generally speaking, just kind of making it so that you can have a better insights as far as like what's happening and what different constraints are affecting the whole process. So just making it so that you can just really see what's going on and make it easier to use just as a whole. I'm telling you, every, you know, all this is that it is so worth the time and the investment. If you haven't seen it, hit our website at Zentech. We've got some webinars and some training classes on how to use both of those tools, Project Explorer and Grading Optimization. Best things that have hit Civil 3D in a decade, both of them. Just, they just impressed me uh, immensely. Um, all right. So, you know, one, one of the things, I guess, that I kind of always go and look for in new, new releases, um, and it's kind of a little bit like Tim was saying earlier, right? They're, they're the tools and the features that aren't always put out in front, um, you know, and, and I find that a lot of the time, the tools that I wind up using the most aren't always the ones that, you know, the, the Autodesk marketing team puts forward on the web page or in their big press releases. Uh, and sometimes those small process changes or the simple tools can have a much bigger impact on your day-to-day -day work than those big ticket items, right? So I'm always looking for those. So Ramesh, you know, to, to that end, what, what kind of, you know, below the radar types of features have you put into this release of InfraWorks? And and which which of those do you think would be most useful to our listeners? Absolutely. You're absolutely right, Jim. So sometimes or many times we, the team works on a lot of stuff that comes to the release, but it doesn't cut the marketing threshold of a press release stuff. It's funny when Tim and I, when we go through the meetings with the marketing, when they start discussing, you think this is worth video? This is worth the picture? I'm like, yeah, sure, absolutely. <laughs> Everything that Ramesh does is worth videos and pictures. Come on. <laughs> but it doesn't make the cut. But yeah, I'm glad. So, so below the radar, there are, again, in every release, we have a bunch of stuff. In this release, also, there are a bunch of stuff. But I, I want to highlight two things that can be a, um, very good, useful for uh, the audience today. They are... We have we always had a couple of services in our InfraWorks called Watershed Analysis and the Profile Optimization. Great tools, by the way. When you design, when you're building a site, for example, the where the flooding is going to happen, how the water is going to affect that particular area, that analysis 
again, like I said in the beginning, it's a key when before you start designing something. That's the watershed analysis. And the profile optimization is from point A to point B. I'm putting something, this is my terrain, I'm putting a road or constructing a transportation site, and this is the terrain I have. What's the best way to get from point A to point B with all the super elevation and all those things? So both are really great services, uh, but it, it was the services with some cloud credits or tokens uh, we had. So the customers want to use it. It's kind of like, you know, should I kind of that? There's always a dilemma in the mind. So in this release, we took off, uh, took the cloud credits out of those two services. They are oh, free, nice. it's available part of the InfraWorks, and we strongly encourage everyone to check it out. Yeah, that, that's amazing. That kind of an update where you you know, take away the fee and just give something like that to people. That's that's huge. Those are those are both really important tools in InfraWorks. So yep. I think that's fantastic. So 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 Ramesh, then you know, it's kind of a, a little bit of a follow up, right? Kind of on, on that same concept, right? Not not just for the 2023 release, but kind of in general. Um, you know, when you're talking about InfraWorks, what what do you think are like the hidden secret kind of tools that you think people really need to know about and, and, and that they just don't use enough. What do you think they should be looking at in your in your set? Yeah, excellent. Yeah. You you yeah, this is another spin off of that one where when the customers look for the watch new release, even when we're talking about today. And I mentioned some of the things that's come out in twenty twenty three, people see it, they might use it for a couple of months or so. Then project comes in, they forgot the feature was there and they couldn't use it fully. Uh, there are many things like that in InfraWorks as well as in Civil 3D. But one thing I'm going to highlight is we added something called Connector for ArcGIS. I don't know if people remember, we, uh, Autodesk and S3 have a good partnership. We announced that two, three or four years back. And we built a lot of uh, capabilities in our product to make the GIS data flow seamlessly from S3 Cloud to uh, Autodesk uh, uh, environment. It's uh, including InfraWorks, Civil 3D, and Map 3D. And it's not just a one direction, it's a bi-directional. You can save back, say everything. That makes the engineers on the Autodesk side, uh, civil engineers or architects working on it, getting the existing condition from GIS very easy, very simple. At the same time, on the GIS side, um, they can get the civil 3D drawings updated so that their asset management or whatever they're doing out the latest and greatest so that the organization keep everything uh, updated in one shot. So we add something called Connector for ArcGIS. It's still running great and does a lot of capabilities added in the past releases. And uh, that is one thing I would say it's one of the hidden ones. People might have tried it or heard about it. They couldn't get a chance to give it a shot. I would strongly encourage them to do that. Yeah, that, that's brilliant. We, I'm, and, and that's actually funny. That's something I hear a lot. People are always looking on, you know, how do we get my ESRI? How do I get my GIS data, you know, imported in and, and, and to work? So there you go, folks. You know, that's where you need to go look for it. So, all right. So, you know, Rocco, since you've been over there napping for most of the morning here, um, you know, we, we always do kind of, you know, what's new types of, of presentations here at Zentech whenever a new software is released. Um, you know, though, of course, you know, Tim and Ramesh, I, I, I still, you guys still haven't hooked us up as Autodesk partners yet. So we don't do what's new on your product lines other than what we're doing here today on the show. Um, but, you know, in, in, in general, though, Rocco, are, 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 when we do these what's new things, are they really well attended? Do you think that that webinars and podcasts like this one, do they really help pull people towards, you know, better tech and smarter solutions? Yes, yes, and yes. Well, there you I'm go. I'm a sales <laughs> I'm a sales and marketing person, so of course. Um, <laughs> You're the one who keeps not putting Ramesh's awesome videos up. That's see, blame him, Ramesh. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you gotta, you know, you you gotta get the messaging out, right? I mean, so yeah, our our, our webinars and 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 the podcast um, videos are are certainly well 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 viewed, and um, you know these are. These are big, exciting changes that are that are being added to these products, um, you know, over the past couple of releases. So it, it's stuff that people are following and, and need to be up to date with and start using, right? I mean, and and there are a lot that are using it, but uh, the features. But um, so yes, definitely. There you go. Yes and yes and yes. So all right. <laughs> so so Tim. Um, yeah, and, and you kind of gave us a little bit of this on, on kind of some of the peripherals earlier, but what what are you, what is your team working for? What are you heading towards later in the year 
uh, for Civil 3D, right? That it's not going to come out in the initial release. And, and I know you have to worry about the NDA stuff, but can you kind of at least give us some some hints and some teasers as to what might be down the road this year? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, again, there's the whole NDA thing. I mean, but, I mean, made a couple hints up at the beginning of this podcast, but, I mean, generally speaking, I mean, anything that you want to know or – anybody wants to know about kind of what we have under consideration is up on our Autodesk civil infrastructure public roadmap. Um, if you check, if you just basically just do a search, Google search for just Autodesk civil infrastructure public roadmap, you'll come to a Trello board, which will basically just kind of let you dig into uh, just overall, just a whole bunch of different elements that we are looking at for future releases of the products. And so, I mean, I know we talked about this, I think one of the other podcasts that we were on um, about some of the stuff that's up there, but you'll, you'll be able to see that, I mean, Ramesh and I right now, we're working on refreshing the whole roadmap so that you'll better reflect basically kind of what was on there before that we've now implemented in 2023 versions of the products. And then we're also adding some new things in there uh, just to kind of give you some hints about what is under consideration for upcoming versions of the products. And so, and even beyond that, um, digging into that even more on May 5th, uh, Ramesh and myself and the rest of our product management team, we're hosting an Ask Me Anything session on YouTube Live uh, that's just really going to dig into the whole public roadmap and basically, as the name implies, answer any questions that folks have about any specific elements or just strategically where the products are going. And so, yeah, highly recommend folks check out the public roadmap. And then if you want to, um, the roadmap lets you vote for things that are most important to you. So that's that's a really important thing. You'll see some things that are getting fair, fair high number of votes up on the roadmap right now that uh, will hopefully imply that we're they're high on our radar. It's not a guarantee that you're going to see them in an upcoming release, but it, I mean, the more votes that th- something gets, the higher the likelihood is that we're going to work on something. Um, but I mean, yeah, please, folks, check out the public roadmap, vote for what's important to you. And then also, I mean, log in and like come up to our Ask Me Anything session on YouTube live on May 5th and ask us, ask us anything. Hey, so I'm going to ask you anything before we go, because I forgot to actually tell you. When and where and how does 2023 Civil 3D and Infoworks, when does that become available to everybody and where can they grab it? You'll see it on your uh, accounts.rds.com. Um, anything, if you have a subscription, you'll see the new versions available. Uh, I, I, I can't give you a specific date, but mid-April is our general time that you see our new products launch. Yep. Okay. Yeah, no problem. I forgot to throw that. I, I didn't think you had a set date, right? But by the time we, this hits the air, it should be really close, if not already out. Absolutely. That's the goal. Yeah, there you go. Perfect. Perfect. All right. So, R- Ramesh, I, I, you know, I've heard rumors that, that your group's been doing a lot of work on the, the reality capture side of things, right? With, with updates and, and new releases of those auto, uh, Autodesk products coming soon. Um, so, you know, what, what's coming down the road and, and how do those tools integrate with InfraWorks and Civil 3D? Absolutely. So, yeah, we have, like how we have Civil 3D and InfraWorks, they are completely um, uh, other division of reality solutions that has all the reality capture stuff. And somehow people found out I'm playing round of golf every day. I don't know, how they <laughs> I don't know where they would have heard that. <laughs> exactly, yeah. So uh, I, I, I took over the position of the product manager for the reality solutions as well, along with InfraWorks uh, uh, earlier this year. Um, so that product side is actually one of the key one for InfraWorks, Civil 3D, actually every infrastructure, um, uh, even the Revit and all those aspects, it's a key there because all our all our customers use the reality capture data or commonly known as a point cloud data in their projects one way or the other. Not a single project I heard in the last four or five years uh, are done without a point cloud data. Um, so it's, it's funny, I was watching that uh, um, the the latest mummy, any any science fiction movie you watch, <laughs> the hero always puts a laser sensor in the middle of the place and collects it. That's why they collect the 3D data. Um, so it's very popular in every aspect of the industries. And uh, on reality solutions of division, we have also keep on catching up on that. So there are very great releases um, 
we did last year like one is called scan to mesh when you can get a point cloud data you can convert into a 3d mesh true 3d mesh not two and a half d or anything you can visualize it see it in variety of products it's kind of like a uh, it's, it's all like how the digital twin um, um, kind of uh, represented with the 3d mesh aspect of it and we also have when you collect with the drones any images you collect we have a recap photo uh, service you can actually convert those images overlapping images into point clouds as well uh, we increase the limits so a lot of cool stuff came last year and the one thing we're planning to uh, release in this year is now any point cloud data small medium or large you can now publish into our um, acc docs or vim360 and now you can visualize it right in your browser so you can share your point cloud data and uh, any other stakeholders or anyone uh, even like for example let's say a civil 3d or rabbit users working on a project and they're like you know what i want to see how this thing looks like in 3d because i need to make some design decisions and you can actually just check it out in the cloud viewer it actually shows everything and you know you can it's like as if you're really there it's not a augmented reality but you know it's there and you can check it out and make it much easier otherwise let's face it if, if you are to ask, ask Braco to download like a 5 GB of point cloud data, then import it and see it. That's going to take some time. Yeah. And this makes it much, much easier. Um, so that's the big one coming out for this year. And we have a great plans for it uh, uh, for the next year release as well. Nice. nice. Yeah, th those online visualizations, I've seen a few of those. Uh, when they're done nicely, they're, they're, they just make life so much easier than trying to mess with those massive data files and get people to understand how they got imported and so on. So. Those are awesome tools. So it sounds like we got a great release coming. Uh, so there you have it, folks. That is your first formal introduction to what's new in the 2023 release for the civil infrastructure world uh, of, of Autodesk. And you get it right from the guys in charge of making it all happen. Uh, so yeah, I want to thank both Tim and Ramesh for being here again. Um, it is always a pleasure to have you guys on the show. And I look forward to you guys hopefully coming back as, as more updates for your products hit the market over the coming year. So thank you, guys. Hey, thank you yeah, for having us. Oh, really yeah. appreciate the time. No problem, everybody. All right, folks, we're going to get out of here, and we will catch you next time on the Cattle Call Podcast. All right, everybody, today's Cattle Call was brought to you courtesy of Zentech Consultants. That's Rocco and I. Uh, Zentech Consultants works with design and manufacturing firms to help our clients purchase and implement the software that they need in these complex industries. Uh, we provide a single point of contact for clients to buy, develop, and learn the most vital software systems for your specific needs. Uh, Zentech strives to be your trusted technology partner from your initial needs all the way through long-term support and training for your entire staff. So Rocco, why don't you tell them how to reach out to Zentech? All right, yeah, you can reach out to us through zentechconsultants.net. You can email us at sales at zentechconsultants.net. Or you can even call us, 866-824-4459. Excellent. We look forward to hearing from you all.